It's a busy travel weekend across Colorado, from the airport to the interstate. What to know before getting out of town for Labor Day? There likely will be more Americans hitting the road uh, than what we've seen er from earlier this summer. And the summertime heat continues here across Colorado. More on the warm and mainly dry conditions across the state for this Labor Day weekend. President Joe Biden calls out supporters of former President Trump. Donald Trump and the MAGA Republicans represent an extremism that threatens the very foundations of our republic. And now asking other Americans to reject their philosophy ahead of the midterm elections. I'm asking our nation to come together, unite behind the single purpose of defending our democracy regardless of your ideology. Plus, the Artemis mission will launch this weekend, and Coloradans worked behind the scenes to make the rocket a reality. Almost the start of the holiday weekend for thousands of Coloradans who will be flying or driving to get out of town. If you're staying right here, it is still going to feel like summer this weekend with temperatures in the 90s, even as we sort of consider this the unofficial start to fall. We have team coverage today at 11. We'll start with Katie LaSalle. It's going to stay hot and dry all weekend. I guess that's good news. No rain to interrupt some of your weekend plans, Katie. Yeah, but it's going to be 90s yeah. once again here across the metro area. So definitely be prepared for some high heat. Typically this time of the year we top out in the mid 80s looking to beat some of the heat. Beautiful conditions up into the mountains. Temperatures are already in the 70s there at Rocky Mountain National Park. We're currently in the low to upper 80s downtown out to the airport. Winds relatively calm sustained from the north northeast. Already 94 degrees in Burlington 60s and 70s into many of our mountain towns and expect 93 for our daytime high in downtown Denver. Low to upper 90s across the eastern plains and really high high heat over the western slope Grand Junction nearing 100. Now we do have the possibility for an isolated gusty storm or two over the far eastern plains, but very little rainfall expected for this weekend. Next chance for seeing rain arrive in the metro. I'll take you to the seven days still to come. All right, be prepared to see a lot of traffic if you're headed to the high country. CDOT expects more than 30,000 cars will travel westbound through the Eisenhower Tunnel today. This is a live look from I-70 at Floyd Hill. You can see the traffic is slowing down and it's expected to be even heavier uh, through the late afternoon today and tomorrow morning. Uh, then, of course, eastbound will be busiest Monday afternoon for people heading back to the metro. Anyone driving this weekend, though, will notice a sign of uh, a cheaper gas prices here. Colorado's average is $3.74 a gallon. Prices have dropped more than 60 cents in the past month. They're still about 10 cents higher than this time last year. Law enforcement agencies are increasing DUI enforcement over the holiday weekend. State Patrol says 160 people have been killed in DUI related crashes in Colorado this year, uh, accounting for nearly 40% of all traffic deaths. CSP will host a pop up exhibit at the Stanley Marketplace today. It walks people through what happens if you get arrested for drunk driving, including jail time, community service and fines. Uber is offering discounts this weekend to encourage people to use a safe, sober ride. It'll be one of the busiest days of the holiday weekend out at DIA. The airport is expecting nearly 80,000 passengers to go through TSA checkpoints today. Denver 7's Jessica Crawford has been at the airport all morning long. Jessica, how are things looking right now as we get into midday here? Well, Nicole, we've been here since a little bit before five this morning. We've seen these lines go from long to short and back again. I'm just going to show you what things look like right now. The good news here is that things really seem to be moving. Of course, we can't promise that the line will stay this short, but we have seen that when it gets long, people are able to move through pretty quickly. Now, if you do check the Fly Denver website, they do have some information on your wait times if that helps you out with your planning for today. They do say that bridge security, the standard screening is nine minutes. Uh, as far as pre-check, really short at four to five minutes. And then at South Security, standard screening is about 15 minutes. So again, you're not going to be waiting too long, but people are excited to get out and about again, Nicole. In fact, we spoke to some people that have some really exciting plans and some good advice. So what are y'all's travel plans? <laughs> well, it's a surprise for me, so I really don't know what we're doing. Yeah, I flew in from Atlanta. 
Wow. Yeah, no, she doesn't know this, but yeah, no, we're going to a resort somewhere off in the mountains. Are you uh, so. to hear Oh, it's okay. <laughs> oh my but, gosh, why are you surprising her like this? Oh, just, oh she's oh. in med school and she deserves it. Any travel tips that you have for people getting out and about? Yeah, uh, just show up on time and uh, don't be the person who stands up too quickly on the airplane. <laughs> Whenever you land, that is. Yeah, how sweet was that couple? And then also, yeah, you never want to be the guy standing up first in the airplane. Don't be that guy. So a busy day here today, but at least people are moving through pretty quickly. Tomorrow, they're thinking it's going to be a little bit less busy with about 50,000 people passing here through this airport. Again, you can visit flydenver.com to get updates on your flights and the wait times here. Live from huh. DIA, I'm Jessica Crawford, Denver 7. Looks like people are uh, keeping a good attitude, though, at this weekend, Jessica. Thank you. And we'll be keeping an eye on your Labor Day traffic and weather all weekend. You can get updates on air, online, and on the free Denver 7 Plus app. New at 11 now, a woman is in the hospital after being stabbed at a Denver homeless shelter. This happened this morning at the St. Francis Center near 24th and Curtis. Police say the woman was stabbed with a pencil. They don't know what led up to it or how badly the woman was hurt. Denver police are also investigating a carjacking that left a man injured this morning. Police say shots were fired near Sheridan and Jewel in relation to that carjacking. They have not released any information about a suspect. Hiring slowed and the unemployment rate went up last month. The August jobs report out today showed 315,000 jobs were added last month, which was down from nearly 530,000 in July. The Federal Reserve has been raising interest rates intentionally to slow hiring and wage growth in an effort to stop high inflation. This morning, President Biden is praising the jobs report, saying since he's taken office, more than 10 million jobs have been created. The great American jobs machine continues its comeback. America workers are back to work, earning more, manufacturing more, building an economy from the bottom up and the middle out. The unemployment rate rose to 3.7 percent, up from 3.5 percent the month prior, as more Americans are now entering the labor market looking for work. President Biden, meanwhile, is calling MAGA Republicans a threat to democracy ahead of the midterm elections. As Ike Jachi reports, the president wants to make the upcoming election a referendum on his predecessor. President Biden speaking directly to the American people outside Independence Hall in Philadelphia, taking on his predecessor by name. Donald Trump and the MAGA Republicans represent an extremism that threatens the very foundations of our republic. After weeks of ramped up rhetoric against what he calls MAGA Republicans, Biden using his speech to make the upcoming midterm elections more of a referendum on former President Trump than on himself. MAGA forces are determined to take this country backwards, backwards to an America where there is no right to choose, no right to privacy, no right to contraception, no right to marry who you love. Biden leveling charge after charge against Trump and his congressional supporters, referencing some Republicans who attacked the FBI following the search warrant executed on Trump's Mar-a-Lago home. There are public figures today, yesterday, and the day before predicting and all but calling for mass violence and rioting in the streets. This is inflammatory. It's dangerous. It's against the rule of law. And we, the people, must say, this is not who we are. Biden's remarks come days after he accused some Republicans of extremism during a private fundraiser and of embracing a philosophy akin to semi-fascism by following Trump. Before Thursday's speech, House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy firing back, accusing Biden of dividing millions of Americans and criticizing his leadership. President Biden has chosen to divide, demean, and disparage his fellow Americans. Why? Simply because they disagree with his policies. That is not leadership. This weekend, former President Trump will be on the campaign trail rallying with GOP candidates in Pennsylvania. Ike Ajachi, ABC News, Washington. 
We're learning new information about the documents former President Trump had at Mar-a-Lago. The Department of Justice says the FBI found top secret records in an office and storage room, along with empty folders with classified banners on them. They also found 10,000 government records without classification markings. Items were found in 33 boxes. It's a busy college football weekend. The CU Buffs host TCU at Folsom Field tonight. Fans are being encouraged to wear black. The Buffs will also be wearing black uniforms inspired by those the team wore in the 1970s. A Ralphie will run on the field for the first time this season, just before kickoff at 8. And the CSU Rams kick off their season tomorrow at the Big House in Ann Arbor. They're playing the 8th-ranked Michigan Wolverines. This is the first time the teams have met since 1994, and the first time the team that the Rams will ever play in Ann Arbor. The Rams are just 2-17 and 17 against top 10 teams since 1993. Don't forget you can watch the Rams tomorrow morning right here on Denver 7. The game starts at 10 a.m. followed by two more games, Oregon at Georgia and Notre Dame at Ohio State. Uh, and you can also watch UNC take on Houston Baptist at Greeley. NASA will try again this weekend to launch its Artemis rocket. Still ahead, the key role the Air Force played in building that rocket. And a Denver hospital is accused of violating several policies. The claims a man is making with a lawsuit he says lays out a pattern of harassment and discrimination.